everyone, Christiana here for Car Player TV for another edition of Strategy. I'm here with Brian Rass. Brian, how's it going? Good, Christy. How are you? I'm doing well. Today we're going to talk about Pot Limit Omaha tournament strategy. So, Brian, you're known for playing Pot Limit Omaha cash games. What's the biggest adjustment that you have to make when going from you know cash games to tournaments? I actually personally don't generally find there's as much a difference between tournament and cash games as like most people seem to talk about them being really different. I mean, the biggest difference is that you end up playing a lot of short stack situations and uh, I mean, obviously you can't rebuy. And then it's also nine handed, which means there's basically a whole bunch of early position spots that are really never there in like six handed and short handed cash games. So um, I mean, I, I would say one of the biggest things probably that you have to do that's a little different is uh, maybe do a little bit less three betting because that's like a really high variance strategy used in cash games to push small edges that maybe in like a tournament you're more interested in like not going out and risking your whole stack if possible. Okay. So I'd say probably the biggest adjustment in PLO is that you're just going to do a lot less three betting in, in spots. And that, that, I think that's probably the biggest one. Now, later in tournaments when uh, in PLO and, and you're getting somewhat short stacked, what's the best strategy to try and pick up chips or, or try and play pots? Because, I mean, obviously you can't just go all in and you can't you know, push people off. So what's the best strategy when you're short stacked deep in a PLO tournament? So, I mean, I think that uh, something interesting happens later in tournaments where you really get a feel for people that are, are going to try to protect their stack and people that are just going to like be ferocious and go after chips. And so if there's like maybe someone who's limped, who's kind of plays a little scared and doesn't want to get in big pot situations, maybe you attack that limp more loosely than you would like a guy that's like never folding. And basically you're going to raise, he's going to call, he's going to flop a pair and he's going to like go all in with you and it's like a 60-40 or 50-50. And so maybe against that guy, unless you really have a hand that you want to play a big pot with, you maybe just like limp behind or... I don't know. I, I think the biggest thing is just figuring out how the different players are going to react and try to um, change the way you're playing to like fit that so that you pick up as many chips as possible without risking your whole stack if you, unless you need to. One concept that I remember speaking to you about when we were analyzing hands for uh, a, an article on the website is that when you have the nuts, but maybe a vulnerable nuts, sometimes you you wait till the turn to see a card come off that, yeah. that you like. So is that more important even in tournaments since you have to worry about your tournament life? Or how does that concept come into play in tournaments? Um, so yeah, this is another example of a spot where I think it's you play, you don't really change how you would play the hand. Mm -hmm. Like, I think it's a spot in a tournament where if your chip stack isn't that deep and like a guy likes say bets and you have the nuts but it's like a really vulnerable board, like a flush draw, I mean, if you can pot and get most of your chips in, in a tournament, I would like probably be inclined to do that because it's almost never a bad thing in a tournament if the other person folds and you just win the pot, especially if they would have had equity versus you. But then, but I mean, honestly, that's pretty much how most people would play the hand in a cash game too. If they're short enough that it's easy potting puts in most of their stack, they would do it. So I don't know, I, I really don't think there's a big difference between tournament and cash game play there. And I think it's another spot that if you're really deep and you want to let a card roll off, you would play the hand the same in both, mm -hmm. you know, to avoid the same problem situations of potting, getting a lot of chips in the pot, but then the other person calls and a bunch of scary cards come on the turn, and now you're facing a tough bet. Okay. Now, once you get down to the very end of the tournament, you may be like three or four-handed. What's the most important thing in PLO? How do you, how do you open up your hand ranges in, in, in PLO to play a little more hands like you would maybe in No Limit? I'm trying to like, as a No Limit player, I'm trying to see the, uh, use some No Limit references to try and get no, better at my not, I'm just smiling because I don't think I've made it down to three or four handed in a PLO <laughs> tournament yet. So when I get there, I'll, you know, let you know. But I mean, generally I think you would do what you would normally do in those situations, which is now that it's like three or four handed, you're going to be... I mean, there's no early position. You're just going to be like on the button a lot. So you're going to end up having to be aggressive and um, raise to win the blinds. And then, I mean, I think it's probably pretty likely that at that spot, I think if I got three or four handed, I would just, I would just play more aggressive. And some of the things like maybe when there's 10 people left, I might not three bet as much to like 
protect my stack more. I think maybe if I got three or four handed, I would just try to play like an animal and win the chips and risk, you know, my stack in order to win the tournament. Because at that point, you're so close to winning, I think it's probably really worth it to, like, to gamble to win as many chips as you can and win the tournament. Well, thank you so much, Brian. Thank you. Chris Jarnett with Brian Rast for Card Player TV.